Hi all, it's Ali here. And oh my God, it's been a long time since I've done a video. It certainly feels like it. It's cold in this room and I'm just about to have a quick cu um, cup of tea. As you can see, I've hardly got any hair. Uh, stress and my OCD and other such things. I just got the clippers out the other day and the whole lot came off. I could... I just could not cope any longer with life. So, you have a little bit of a story coming here. Okay. My dad, who I, I'm sure you know, he's 96, um, got, him, got poorly and he couldn't really take a breath in properly. He didn't feel able to, uh, as he walked, get air in enough. Now he's had a chest complaint for, oh my goodness, years and years and years, but I, it's not really dad I want to talk about so much as the actual experience of going to a hospital that's in a COVID crisis. And also my father can't hear, but he has got used to reading my lips particularly, and he's got used to my voice tone. So there are a lot of questions when you go into hospital. We arrived at the hospital, um, probably, oh, I don't exactly remember, three-ish or something. And outside of the hospital, they'd actually got plastic sheeting coming out and down like a, like a sort of walk-in tent, all in a long row. I was really surprised to see that. And the first thing, that the nurse, one of the nurses said to me was, don't you know we're in a COVID crisis? And I'm thinking, my dad can't breathe. I need a wheelchair. We've brought him in ourselves. We didn't call an ambulance. Um, I'm sorry, you're in a COVID crisis. What do you want me to do with that statement? What do they want me to do with that? <laughs> I thought, they're crazy. And I said, that's as may be, but please could I have a wheelchair? My father's really can't take a breath and I'd appreciate a wheelchair. Now, if somebody said to me that somebody can't really get a breath in, I'd be pretty worried. I said to them, I don't think for a minute he's got COVID. I think this is something different because of his um, history, but he's very frail. Anyway, they got me, they did get me the um, wheelchair, which wasn't like a normal wheelchair. You know, the hospital wheelchairs, they're like, they're like trolleys. You can't really steer them properly, can you? Anyway, uh, he said, uh, uh, what did he say to me? You can't come in because there's questions to be asked and you can't come through the door. Your father will have to answer. I said, well, one, he's very old. Two, he's virtually got no hearing at all and relies on me to interpret. And three, he can't oddly see. So if you would like to take him in, that's fine. I will be very upset about that. I'll mask up. If I get COVID, I get COVID. I can't, I don't know, I don't know how we're going to proceed because he won't be able to tell you what you need for the forms. Anyway. He said, well, oh, if you've got to interpret for him, that's fine. So I went in. We did all the the paperwork. Did you know they have to, these poor nurses have to do the paperwork three times. And it's all the same questions. It's all the same information. I thought that those days were over. I would have expected it to be just straight into a computer and that's it. But oh, no, no, no. Paperwork's there. Anyway, we had to do the initial consultation right outside in this tent. And then I said, he's really getting cold. So they let me in after a big fight. One woman was really horrible. But the young guys, there were two young nurses there, said, you've got to let her in. You've just got to. This is ridiculous. You can't expect people to um, come in, you know, that are elderly and not be able to understand what's being asked. That's just not fair. Anyway, before I went in, 
these two guys, this is a great advert for the National Health, go off in their break for five minutes um, before we go in um, and have a cigarette each. <laughs> I was cracked up laughing. I'm sorry if I sound a bit off, or a bit sort of odd. I do have COVID now. Of course I have COVID. I've been in a hospital from, you know, which I had to do. There was no question. I wore a mask. I did everything. But you see, the problem is that to lip read, you have to pull the mask down. So there was no chance of me not getting it really, was there? <laughs> anyway, this was about 10 days ago now. So we went in and he got booked in to the A&E department. And again, all these forms were filled out. And I said to dad, they got him a bed um, and they had little bays and they were only allowed to have, I think it was five people in a bay including themselves or in, in that particular area with the, they had three bays, I think it was, and then the two nurses. So I was listening to this and I was trying to explain to dad, he said um, about, about uh, how they were only allowed a certain amount because he said, is this the bed? Is this, a, you know, my hospital room? I said, no, no, dad, this is A&E. You'll go up to the ward um, because we'd also been to the doctors first. I'd forgotten to tell you that bit. And the doctors had given us a letter and said, you need to go in for a few days, you know. So we, I went upstairs. Uh, I wasn't uh, allowed to go upstairs to the ward. And I did say, are we allowed visiting? And she said, as long as you've done a, a, a what is it called? One of those flow test things to say you're negative you bring it in each day you should be all right we've only just opened our doors to visitors um but of course I don't know how long that's going to last so dad said leave me here you I could be here all night I'm comfortable they've booked me in and he said well, as much as I'd love you here we've done all the questions I had Simon sitting in the car outside <laughs> so I said okay that's fine um I didn't want to leave him I came out and I cried of course because you know I'm a very sensitive soul <laughs> and my beautiful dad I didn't want to leave him there on his own but you know he was dropping off to sleep he was exhausted and uh I can't remember what they'd given him but they you know put cannula in and all that anyway and dad was in for about, I think it was about seven days. The first two days I was able to visit and then no more. So he had five days without me. I did worry a lot, but he had informed me that the food is good. So that's good because dad hates food. Dad would take a, a pill over food. So, you know, it was good that, that he felt that the meals, he could eat them and you know, that's going to give him the strength he needs. So he had antibiotics and he had, um, oh God. Oh, oh yes, they gave him water tablets because the fluid built up on his lungs, you know, and that happens in older people. And of course that makes you breathless. So he came out, he felt better actually than he had done in a long time. So it probably needed to be done anyway. Um, but it, the whole rigmarole of the system and I said to, during this time the first two days I could go in but on that second day the um test testers they stopped the government in their wisdom decided no more testing well I haven't got any more testing kits I couldn't get any there were none at the pharmacist to even buy at that moment a week later there is and they cost two pounds each and that's well, what it, it's got, it is what it is. It's got to be done. So anyway, I said to them, what, what are we going to do? Tomorrow I haven't got any testing. Are, am I going to be allowed in? And she said, well, the, the trust of the hospital hasn't made its mind up yet. We haven't got any guidance on that whatsoever. I said, well, could we find out? Shall I write a letter, oh, not write a letter, but, you know, send a text 
how do we go about this? And I had at one time the whole of the workstation with lots of doctors and nurses asking, and they were all asking each other, have we got any guidance from the trust? And I thought to myself, oh my God, this is, today is the day there are no, no more. They're still allowing visitors in. What the hell, the numbers are rising. And these poor, poor nurse, they didn't know. They, they were even thinking that because they were national health people, maybe they should, they were, they're allowed them free. Maybe what they could do is stockpile them. Well, that's not an answer really, because that can, can't go on indefinitely. But I, 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 I did chuckle. I felt really sorry for all of them. Most of them looked absolutely dead on their feet. Um, anyway, dad came out, we got dad a few days ago and literally within 48 hours, I came down with COVID. So this is day three for me of COVID. Yes, I feel like shit. <laughs> and yes, I've got a temperature and I just feel dreadful. But what can you do? I'm trying to keep my sense of humour up about it all. Because, and I'm hoping, of course, that I've got the, the strain, which isn't as, as um, the, the, you know, the Omicron one and not one of the other ones. I'm hoping that I've got that. And I have been jabbed three times. And also, I'd had to go to the doctor two days of myself, two days before I went, before I got COVID. So I had to ring up my surgery and say, look, I've been to see my doctor and she might get it and the surgery might get it and although I was wearing a mask and I did everything right most of it is because obviously I have to pull down the mask to talk to dad there's no other way and they kept saying you need to keep the mask up and talk to your dad well that's not an interpreter <laughs> I'm I I had to smile I get it I totally got what they were saying what a palaver, eh? What a palaver. I expect many of you have had similar situations. Uh, my dad's home. He's good, as far as I know. Um, I keep in text, touch by email, and he has his carer who's doing a few extra hours. Thank God for her. I don't know how we manage without her. She's brilliant. Um, so I'm just going to say to, to the carer that he's got, thank you so much. I don't suppose she'll ever watch this video, but if she does, to her. Um, take care, all of you. I hope you, you're keeping well and that if anybody's got COVID, that it passes quickly. I've been told day three, four, maybe five are the worst and then it gets better. So, hey, I'm day three. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.